when did you start to realize you had a, a sort of a niche skill to mm. teach? Still waiting for that moment um, <laughs> to teach. Okay. Well, I think that, so this is an, a really, I put this in the tweet. This is a really important point for teaching because online teaching, because I think that there's an intermediate step that often doesn't get talked about as much, which is like coaching, mm. coaching or consulting, what, whatever you want to call it, but kind of a, a one-to-one sale of your time. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest moment in this whole entrepreneurial journey, or one of the biggest moments, at least like on the economic side of things, was one of my readers reached out to me probably about a, a year after I quit. And so the newsletter had been going, it kept going after that 36 person BCC, I just kept doing it. Uh, we're approaching 296 uh, this coming, or I'm taking this Saturday That's off, but next Saturday, 296. Dope. So this person was a Wall Street uh, portfolio manager and he reached out to me and he said, hey, can, you, can I pay you to come coach my management team? And I was like, okay, uh, that's cool. The hedge fund, deep pockets, you know, know what I'm saying? So, and I was like, sure, on what? And he said, can you coach them on how to be happy? I said, I, I said to myself in my head, because I was like, you know, just give me the business. Um, in my head, I was like, I don't think that's how it works, but how much you want to pay me? Um, <laughs> and so I ended up becoming a, a, a leadership, a life coach, like whatever, whatever you want to call it for this hedge fund, this group of hedge fund people. And that was the first moment when I was like, oh, I might be onto something like the thing that I'm doing, writing this newsletter makes one other person in this universe believe that I have a pay, uh, you know, monetizable skill and he's willing to pay me on an hourly basis to kind of extract it. And so that was like a, a, big uh, turning point because I was like, oh, it, it validated that the market believed that I had something unique yeah. to offer. Yeah. And, and what I think this does as well is I assume you did multiple of these, you kept doing them, kept doing them, and you got to refine that specific skill. You got to know what people struggled with. You got to come up with the right solutions to it and get better and better through repetition, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Through, so it gives you the confidence boost. It validates the business model. And then you're intimately in the, in the room with people that are, you know, in life coaching, it's struggles with work, struggles with work-life balance, um, questions about ambition and identity and, you know, and so on and so forth. And, uh, and so you had this kind of insight, look, right? Because at, at the end of the day, a lot of times people buy things to make a problem go away. I mean, that's almost mm. often, right? You know, the saying, it's like you want to sell people painkillers, not vitamins. And so you had this coaching and like small, I want to just like say small group settings give you a first hand look into people's daily problems. Now it could be a very tactical business problem. Like, you know, our friend uh, Robbie is like teaching people how to be good public speakers, or it could yeah. be something time management or something much more uh, existential. So that was like the first foray into it. And that really like opened up, it opened up many doors uh, of, of business, but it really opened up possibilities and imagination in my own head. Yeah, and I think this is one of the first big lessons today is that this is one of the best ways to get started. If you want to teach, if you want to create uh, a course or anything like that is to just start to do it one-on-one. -on -one. And it doesn't even have to be like a big client, right? It could just be friends, family. Totally. Like, yeah. And, and I don't want to... I want to hang on that point because I've been really thinking about this a lot because people say, oh, at that point, Kay, you had 2,000 people on your email list. You had an audience. You had this. But there's a few really important things about like there's there's no greater validation to an idea when someone opens their wallet. Yeah. Like if they're willing to, it, it doesn't matter if it's like 29 bucks. If someone's willing to pay for something you have to provide, that is a, a, a it's a, a very important sense of validation that you don't get in content creation. Mm -hmm. You cannot transform translate click rates and open rates into this person pulled out their credit card to buy yeah. X. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that people always say, well, uh, oh, like it's going to be the three people from Facebook who buy, you know, my expertise on, you know, how to make, you know, delicious Cantonese 
style fried rice, yeah. right? Like, but you know what? Some people might actually want to learn that. And some people yeah. might want to pay 25 bucks to learn that. But here's the other thing is, as you try to, just the process of selling that opens up like 10 new skills that you immediately need to learn. Mm -hmm. totally. Persuasion, copywriting. Where do I, how do people pay me? Do they like send me a PayPal? Yeah. Right. So just that little mini project opens up like five to, to 15 new skills that you, you have a taste of what you need to know. Yeah. And then you can go further and further. Yeah, I love that. Um, and it can be as, as small as 25 bucks. Like it's just, it's the process of doing it. And doesn't the amount, you don't have to think like this is going to sustain you for forever, like yet, right? You just need to validate the idea. Absolutely. Um, okay, so you you started this, you mentioned that you had, it was like a live webinar, the sort of the mm -hmm. first time you started doing this. Um, so a bunch of keynote slides, Q&A, you know, and, and it was on, oh, actually, this is the other thing I wanted to ask. So this one is on reimagining financial independence. Yeah. Such an emotive thing. It wasn't mm -hmm. like budgeting and spreadsheets and cash flows, mm -hmm. right? You mentioned the 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 bank brought you in to do teach them how to be happy. Like mm -hmm. you weren't selling tactics, you were selling a vision, right? Mm -hmm. ha, have you thought any deep like have you thought deeply about this and and how positioning that as the vision and you have to be on and it's an authentic vision, which I think is always true with you is so much, much more, it's so much more powerful to sell than just the tactics. Yeah, it's a, that's an excellent question. So actually to answer that very precisely, um, I actually wanna put aside the, the financial webinar uh, okay. and talk specifically about the cohort-based course, Supercharge Your Productivity. So the first one of those was uh, almost two years ago, cohort one. We just wrapped cohort six, um, revving up for cohort seven. And I caught the notion bug. And I, I just love the app. I love everything it stood for, the design. It was just fun. It's how my brain worked. It solved so many problems as a small business owner, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And another kind of random thing is like how I became known as a notion expert was actually by posting tiny videos on Loom, right? So I know some mm. of the Twitter families here. Yeah. And so they, they'll recognize those videos, but I was just, I would do these tweets. Who has questions on Notion? I'll reply in a tweet thread with a video. Yeah. And so again, right? Like if you think about Notion two, three years ago, it was brand new. It, it was yeah. fair game for anyone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I had a leg up because I had an audience, but. Being an expert in it was fair game for anyone, just mm -hmm. like blockchain was fair game for anyone 14 years ago. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And something, Figma, whatever, you name it, like something else will give you that opportunity where the point, the starting point of expertise is T equals zero for every single person on this call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something like that will probably happen tomorrow. Yeah. So... So anyway, sorry. Yeah, well, I got you, you did this. I remember you did this. I, I love that. I wanted to let that sit for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you did this with ConvertKit uh, uh, as well. In fact, that's how you and I became friends. Like three, I think three years ago, two, three years ago, you did a whole Loom video for me on like on ConvertKit. And you were putting out a bunch of stuff around that. So it's like, and, you, and so it's almost like a little, uh, you were trialing an error like uh, on a bunch of different things, experimenting. T totally. And, and again, that's why, you know, that comment about the newsletter becoming a little repetitive holds true. It's like, you can't fake that, right? Like you met me through a Loom video on ConvertKit. Yeah. I can't fake my enthusiasm for ConvertKit. Yeah. It's just, it, it would be too exhausting. Like of all the things in the world to fake enthusiasm for, like uh, ESP is not like the most exciting one, um, <laughs> but you can't fake that, right? I always say you never want to compete with someone who's having fun and who genuinely cares. And I think that yeah. that's like the ethos that I try to bring to everything that I do. Like, I want to show you, this is why I always wear neon, right? Like I want to show you that I'm trying to live the rad li lifestyle to the <laughs> fullest. It's Amen. not an act. Yeah. Um, and you do. And who genuinely cares. Yeah. 